Roger Daltrey, first of all, congratulations on the Tommy film because I thought your involvement with it was superb. I really did. Oh, thanks. Presumably, having, in a way, lived with Tommy for so long, Roger, was, was, did the whole character come alive for you with this film now? Um, yeah, I mean, he's always been alive to me ever since we... He wasn't when we first recorded it because it was just a studio thing. It was like a, just a, another set of Who songs. But once we got it on the road, he was always alive to me. And I think he's, he's alive in everybody mm. <laughs> in a certain way, in different ways. Because that's one of the things that occurred to me about the film, you see. I mean, obviously, I'd absorbed the story through the album and seen the stage show, but it all really did come alive for me. I suddenly understood parts of it that I wasn't yeah. really... I mean, did you find that, in a sense, this was a new way of looking at Tommy for you as well? Oh, sure, yeah. I mean, I understood a hell of a lot more after we did it. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I mean... The thing about the original record is it's so full of holes, it, it's not a story at all. And then when we did the film, we met, met up with all sorts of problems. But it, I think the film works. I think it works now. Yeah. I don't know whether it's everybody's visual, but there again, it's... It, it's a good visual. Yeah. We're out. <laughs> How long did it take to make, Rose? Um, 26 weeks in shooting. It looked very hard work, too. It was. Very physical work. Yeah. Because we had a terrible summer. It was all filmed outdoors in England. You know what the summer was like. Mm. One of my favourite uh, sequences in the film is the one we've seen on the programme earlier, actually, the pinball wizard yeah. sequence. <laughs> Where did you do that? That was done at Portsmouth in uh, King's Theatre. Mm. And they were all kids from uh, Ports Portsmouth uh, Polytechnic, I think. All the students, I, we had a great time. It was yeah. fantastic. Yeah. It looked like it. Actually. They were great kids, yeah. They were really great. I, I think they enjoyed themselves as well. Yeah. Because I heard a story, uh, I think I'm right, there was an amateur dramatic society, wasn't there, booked into the theatre? <laughs> yeah, so were you sharing with them? Well, that, they, they was on after we finished filming at night, yeah. Oh, I see. So, so the set had to be put up every day at about five in the morning, torn down again at six at night. Yeah. It was really, really a weird setup. How long were you down there doing that sequence? That was about uh, three days, I think, that, that sequence. Because mm. this, is, this is your first film, isn't it, Rush, yeah. really? Yeah. I mean, did you... Was it very different, changing <laughs> media and...? and... I, I, I mean, I, I still can't get over it, really. I mean, I, the first day on the set, there was uh, Anne Margaret, Oliver Reed. I mean, within the first week, there'd been Jack Nicholson, and I thought, what the bloody hell am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> that was me, I thought, oh dear. <laughs> and uh, I still haven't got over it. I mean, I'm lucky. I'm, I, I realise I'm lucky. I mean, Ken asked me to do it, and I did it. And I went in at the deep end, and it s seems to have worked. Yeah. Um, did you find this? Well, I don't really know what it feels like. I mean, I don't... It, I haven't it hasn't changed me, you know. Yeah. And I loved, I loved every minute of it. Because, again, you see, one of the things that occurs to me about the film, there's no spoken dialogue no, at all, is the whole way through. All. I mean, did you find it difficult, in a way, expressing yourself without no, no, being no, able to use it? I found it was what I'd been searching for on the stage as a singer for years. That's all I, that really got me off, actually. That was really great. Because um, on the stage, there's, there's a certain amount you can do. You give out to the audience and they give it back and you sing it. And it's, that's like the rock reaction, you know. Mm. And it builds up into something. But on doing it on film and, and just... Being able to do it in different situations rather than a set stage, really, I really got off on that. I mean, it really did bring out something in me that I've wanted to get out for a long time, yeah. Mm. Were you happy with the way that the film was interpreted? I mean, in the sense of... Yes, well, I mean, first I, of all, it's obviously very Ken Russell. Yeah. But I love Ken Russell. I've always been an admirer of his. And I think he's the only man who could have made, a, made Tommy a successful film. And I think it will be a success. Yeah, I do. Um, I the, the thing that worried me most about Tommy making a film of it was that, as far as we, the Who, were concerned, is that the music is timeless. It goes on forever. And if you make a film of the music, it's very easy to stamp it with a date. Mm. And that was made in 75 or 74 or whatever. And I think Ken's come up with a film that won't date. I don't think it will. Mm. I think it, it will be as, have as much longevity as the music. And I think that's very important, and I think he's done it. I really do. How much were the Who involved in the interpretation? Um, well, Ken came up with the original screenplay and we all just put our bits in. I mean, Ken's scripts are very loose and he, he lets you do more or less 
you know, if you come up with a good idea, he uses it. I mean, he even listens to the to the tea boy if they come up with a good idea. I mean, he's great, such a great geezer, you know. Um, Pete was very involved with the music. I mean, Pete had to do a hell of a lot of extra writing, and the mixing took about I don't know something like eight weeks every day of working. You know, mm. he really worked very hard. Mm. And you're back working with Ken now. Yeah, I was well, halfway through this one. Yeah. yeah, I mean, presumably now you're going to get more and more involved with filming. Do you, no, I don't do you think, see that? No, I don't. I might, may, may, maybe. I don't. I don't really want to. I want to get back with the Who. But I mean, one thing that worried me after. I'd finished Tommy was that people were going to start thinking that I am Tommy and I'm not. Mm. I'm really not. Um, he's a bit lily white <laughs> in a way. <laughs> 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 and uh, Ken asked me to do Franz Liszt and I, and I couldn't believe it. I thought he was pulling my leg. And he, he said, I never joke. <laughs> and he wasn't. And so here I am doing Franz Liszt and it's great because it, he is. It, He's a lot like Tommy in some ways, but he's a, a raving, bawdy, <laughs> you know, lusty, and religious and spiritual sort of musician. It's a, it's a good part, actually. Mm. But it's, it's got a lot more of um, more of me in it, actually, than Tommy, I think. Because mm. you touched on the point there that, 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 that occurred to me, the reason I asked the question, actually, Roger, right, really, with you getting so involved with the films now, with John doing the Ox thing, you know, I, I was wondering about the future of The Who. Yeah, I know, it, I know from, from your end and from our audience's end, it might look very weak at the moment, but it's not. I think The, the Who now, because they have been together so long, there's nothing they can't do. I mean, once I've finished this and John comes back from the States, we're straight in the studio and recording another album and we're going to tour and work. I mean, I don't, I've got no intentions of doing any more films at all. And, and something might come up and then we just have another break, you know. Mm. But I think that's the most important thing out of all of this, that the Who stay together. I mean, it really is important to me anyway. It really is. And I think they will. I, I, don't, I don't see any chance of them breaking up. So leading on from that then, Rog, just finally, uh, your own solo album now. When is, when is that going to be coming out? Um, hopefully in May. Um, I'm aiming for a single, because I still like singles, it's part of the old rock tradition. I know a lot of modern groups don't like them, but I, I do. Um, and this, uh, the single I hope to get out in the first week in April, and the album in May, produced by Russ Ballard. Uh, very funky album, not like the last one. Mm. Very funky, I mean, he's done a great job. Very underrated guy. Really <laughs> is. Mm -hmm. um, very pleased with it. It's called going to be called Ride a Rock Horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Get out of laughs> that. <laughs> well, listen. The very best of luck with yeah, everything in the future, Rose. Yeah, I'll come and do a few tunes on your show. Good. All right. <laughs> we'll see you then. Thanks yeah, very much. Good luck.